Glass Barbie by Michael Bota, read by the author. In Glass Barbie, cockroach Kyle Copley, a crackhead crone with a small brain and a big mouth, convinces his former best friend Richie McMullen, now a squeaky clean senior cop, that he can help Barbara Barbie Constantino, a high school crush, apparently held for ransom by bikers in the sunny north of New Zealand. Problems pile up quickly though. The troubled Barbie is happy to stay kidnapped. She doesn't want to go back to her privileged parents, and she reveals there is probably a plot to milk her family's fortune. Over two wild weeks of love-hate hangouts and bungled rescues from Whangarei to Kaitaia to the Bay of Islands, Crooked Carl finds that he might be the only person honest enough to get Barbie back. Chapter 1. Trying to be a mate the only way I know how. So I strut into the cop shop just before 5am and hold the general inquiries buzzer long enough to summon a piglet. Walking up to the counter, all weary and groggy, picking a dried booger out of my eye. I'm here to speak to Snitchy Richie Little Dick, except I don't say that I'm here to see Snitchy Richie Little Dick. I actually say I'm here to see Richard McMullen, in case his pig pals don't know his special name. The dude hates being called names, if I remember correctly, and... <laughs> Remembering is the name of the game. It's been eight years since I've seen the guy, and considering the amount of substances I've smoked, my uh, memory ain't the most reliable. Chances are we've both got new bodies, and now he'll be Senior Constable Richard McMullen, 75 kilos, flat torso, responsible haircut, no tats. He's still a minger, though, as in half ginger, half Maori, white nose, cornflake freckles, hair the colour of rust. And to be honest... It's way beyond midnight. Whangarei is boring as an amputee peep show, and unless you've got a belly full of crack, I found myself drawn to the lamplight with nothing to do except wind my old mate up for shits and giggles. I might unload certain underworld goss about a certain kidnapping, see if I can get paid as a confidential informant, get some of those sweet witness protection hookups, get me a new house, new threads, hell, might even get me a labradoodle. Now, the sleepy cop minding the counter, some Indian guy, amazing the colour of cops they got these days, he tells me that Senior Constable Richard McMullen is in his office and he'll be out shortly. They gave the prick an office? I know, he goes, rolling his eyes. I'd sort of heard through the grapevine that they'd uh, made Richard a senior piglet. He must have risen through the ranks with hard, steady work and dedicated professionalism. Fucking try hard. Usually you only become a senior constable after 14 years, but it sounds like they made an exception for my old Richie Rich. I spotted the update on Facebook on my mobile. They gave him a big ceremony and shit, like it was the Carrot Top Awards and he got named Ginger of the Year. Richie ain't been in the police force for 14 years, but what he has done is he's condensed 14 years of squeaky clean, goody good, suck up narc holiness into his eight years till they gave him an early promotion. Fucking overachiever. He did all the profesh development night classes he could, while I did all the periodic detention I could. <laughs> PD for both our asses. So the Indian cop wanders off, and through a gap in the sliding doors behind me, there's a whisper of warm summer wind that touches my legs, and I can feel the sky begin to glow. It's December, baby, early summer. Can't enjoy the season without a best mate, though, can you? I don't appreciate being left standing in the darkest part of the night in a boring-ass foyer, so I drop my pie wrapper on the floor and look around to see what I can steal. I can't reach a whole arm through the layer of bullet-deflecting and true to stopping plastic that hangs down over the counter, but I can get my fingers through and snaffle whatever it is on the counter, which turns out to be a Hot B magazine. Now, Hot B is heat on the beat. It's a police association mag by coppers for coppers. There's got to be some sensitive information in the magazine. I reckon a hundred bucks to hand this over to the Hells Angels, I'm thinking. So finally a new cop drifts up to the counter and says, Thanks, Rohit, to its pig pal and looks at me and its mouth opens like a goldfish, bro. Oh, oh, oh shit. It's Richie. And Richie recognises. That's right, you so-called senior motherfucker. You remember me helicoptering my schlong in the pool changing rooms year 10? How I taught all the boys that the trick was to jack it so it's hard first so you've got maximum cock length to spin. I know that look on your surprise face, bro. We know each other inside out, homie. I take my beanie off and scratch the bugs out of my scalp. 
I guess I look a little different. Scars all over my skull, ink on my neck, skinny arms, big shoulders from doing push-ups at 4am at the bus station because I was too cranked to sleep. Sup, chief, I say to my oldest, bestest mate, secured behind two panels of plastic. Mr. Senior Constable is protected with a stab-proof vest, a walkie-talkie, a taser tucked under his belt, and fresh new pips on his light blue uniform. New threads, sure, but he's still a ginge, which means I still look down on the cunt. Up to Cockroach Carl, he goes, sticking his fingers in his belt, no handshake or nothing. Look at you, all tattooed up, nice earrings. Cheers, I got piercings down south too, that's a story for you. You picking up lost property, Carl, or... Nah, bro, I just, I don't know, I thought we could, you know, catch up or whatever. Listen to a little Limp Biscuit, play a little Limp Biscuit, what do you say? I'm trying to be a mate the only way I know how, but I can tell I'm rubbing him the wrong way. Story of my life, bro. I seem to piss off 99% of people. Might be why they call me Cockroach Carl. What I'd say is you're wasting police time, which carries a maximum sentence of six months imprisonment or a thousand dollar fine. He takes a step back from the counter. Down the hall behind him, I can see a smidgen of the office that he's come out of. It's the neatest fucking office I've ever seen. He's even got a potted fern by his keyboard, the pin dick. Listen, there's this thing I wanted to talk to you about, I go. It's about Barbie. Barbara Constantino from school, you know, from a year. Remember her fans were on the rich list and shit? She got abducted, like, last month, bros. She's missing anyway. I was thinking we could, you know, bounty hunt that shit. Bounty hunters, boy. This person's name is Barbie, you're telling me? Richie goes. Barbie is in the children's doll? It's what we used to call her, remember? You know, the Greek chick. Barb's Barbwire, Barbarella, Conan the Barbarian... You know her, bros, I'm telling you, from school. Look, there's there's legitimate work I need to be prioritising right now, Richie goes, peering past me, hoping there are people wanting to report lost cats, anything better than my annoyingness. Too bad for him. <laughs> I'm in shorts and a basketball singlet at five in the morning holding a pie at the only 24-hour man police station in 10,000 square miles. I need Richie. I don't got nothing else to limp it onto. Legitimate, eh, Rich? How's legitimate working out for you? Policing's been good to me, he goes. How's being whatever you are? Oh, I'm an artist, I go. You ought to follow my socials, Rich. Well, kind of a big deal these days. Oh, I've done a bit of stand-up comedy down in the Big Smoke. I've done a few welds too, and I've got my truck license. You can do free courses in jail. It's pretty sweet. Oh, I'm mostly an influencer, though. Of course you are. Richie repositions a piece of paper to make it look like he's busy tidying things. He wipes his fruity little ginger moustache with a finger, like I'm a bogey that he's smearing off. Oh well, thanks for coming by, Carl. Have a good... I want to help you out. This hot-ass fugitive Barbie, either that she's on the run or the run's on her. I want to bring her in, know what I'm saying? Click me some of that sweet, sweet reward money. Remember how rich her folks were, them immigrant Greeky people? The pillars on their mansion and shit? They had two maids, brothers. Two! And the dad ran for council, you remember that? You know about the reward? I know shitloads more than it looks like I know. Look, we don't use the term fugitive, Carl. Somebody is not a fugitive unless deemed so retroactively by the court when they fail to... Bro, I'm getting cold, standing here. Let's grab a brewski. I want to talk cash cow. Make a plan. What? You're suggesting a beer now? It's 540 I shrug. It's night time though, isn't it? Nice when you're supposed to drink beer. It'll be dawn in 20 minutes. Peeps are saying there's 10 grand up for grabs if we bring her back, bro. You could use 10 grand, couldn't you? I get a 10 grand bonus if my name is attached to charges leading to successful prosecution rates of 75% or greater. Around here we do things the honest way, Carl. I have no interest in dirty money. There's steam on the plastic divider now. I'm desperate. Meanwhile, Rich the Snitch is slowly backing away, going back to his faggy little fern. Look, listen, the money ain't dirty. It's her folks' money. It's not about the money. It's it's about, like, it's about impressing a female, Carl, because your genes instruct you to pursue any faint hope of reproducing. Exactamente, I tell him. I go to high-five him, but my palm smacks the invisible plastic. Bro, you remember how fine Barbie was? Carl, okay, look, I am aware, aware of the case. 
Obviously, I'm aware Barbara Constantino has been listed as missing. CIB is handling the reward. I suggest you liaise with them when you have something useful to share. Until then, you'll have to turn your body 180 degrees, put one leg in front of the other, and walk away, my friend. Nice seeing you, but I really do have to. I hooked up with her little sister, Shayna, the flat one. Gave her some pity attention, you know? Oh, I liked Barbie way better, though. So I was a little off about Barb's, you know what I'm saying? Like, she got them traumatized, but in a good way. It made her all loco and wild, like, I don't know, Amy Winehouse sort of thing. Watch yourself. Senior Constable Richie growls. What's the relevance of all this, anyways? Barbie's a homegirl. That's the relevance. She's old school. You get the Constantino sisters and you and me together and we could have us a mini Sacred Heart reunion. He takes a deep breath. Almost says something. Walks a few meters down the hall, puts a hand on the door of his office and hovers. The dude's kind of shuddering like when you get really pissed at a toddler but you're not allowed to drop kick it. I guess I'm the annoying toddler. Alright Carla, I finished my shift at 8, but it's still too early to be drinking alcohol. Shit, watch me drink then if you want. Jovial Jug Pub at 8 then. It's over the road. I'm aware of where the jug is located. I stuck around my neighborhood after we graduated. I didn't leave my community to go and be an influencer, as you claim. He shakes his head and retreats, pausing in the corridor to fold his arms and yarn to some lame-looking cops. The Indian one, plus a girl and a fat cop, dorks united. I see Richie hands a book of Sudoku puzzles to a piglet, and the piglet hands back a book of word finds, and Richie shuts his office door real firm. Me? I walk out of the sliding door of the cop shop. It is a month until Kiwi Christmas and summer dawn is making the air thick and warm like one of them carb farts when you've only been eating Maccas for a month. There's a pub meters away. I've got a valuable magazine down my pants and I am looking forward to wheeling and dealing and catching up with my favouritest bro. I didn't really dig the dude's snobby fucking straight out attitude just now, but I know that he'll come right. Because back in school, I took all the risks while he followed like a meek little sheep. And he always appreciated it after. <sighs> I just hope some of the old Richie is left. <sighs>